Midas estimation is a method used to estimate models with data of different frequencies. eViews has a number of Midas estimators built in, including both univariate and var Midas models. eViews 14 introduces a new class of Midas model, the Midas Garch estimator of Conrad and Clean 2020. The Midas Garch model allows the variant specification of the Garch model to include variables sampled at a lower frequency than the target variable. This is particularly apt for financial models where you may be modeling financial data sampled on a daily basis but wish to model the variance with macroeconomic data that is sampled at a monthly or quarterly frequency. To demonstrate, we have a simple work file containing daily returns of the S&P 500 index between March 2014 and March 2024. On a separate page, we have monthly data on industrial production growth in the United States. We'll estimate a Garch model for returns using industrial production as a variance regressor. To estimate the minus Garch model, we return to the daily page and click on Quick Estimate Equation. We change the estimation method to Arch and then change the Arch model to Midas. We'll enter return as our dependent variable in the mean equation and add a constant. In the low frequency regressor box, we type the name of the page followed by a slash and then the name of the lower frequency series, in our case, monthly slash IP growth. We'll use a year of data, so set the number of lags to include to 12. Clicking OK produces the estimation results. The results are similar to any other Garch estimation in eViews. We have estimates of the mean equation at the top, in our case just a single constant. Then we have the variance equation, and the summary at the top gives information on the Garch process and how it's related to the coefficients and the tau variable. The tau equation is shown below the variance. Finally, at the bottom of the output, we have the lag distribution for the Midas weighted tau equation. This estimation treats negative and positive shocks equally. In many situations, it may be more realistic to model positive and negative shocks separately. We can do this by clicking the Estimate button to bring up the estimation options again, and then selecting the Include Threshold Term box. Clicking OK again produces the output. From the summary at the top, we can see that C2 is the impact of the previous period's residual, no matter the sign, and C4 is the impact of negative-only residuals. We can see the impact of negative is much larger than the overall impact, meaning negative shocks have a larger effect on returns volatility.